Welcome to the second homework video. Hopefully you've managed to complete all of homework one by this point and got familiar with the code base and the graphics pipeline. In this week's homework, you'll be implementing different shading models for the lighting you've learned in class and understand the impact of lighting and shading on runtime. In this week's homework, in addition to writing more JavaScript, you'll start writing your own shaders in GLSL. It is a shading language used by OpenGL and WebGL and you'll be using it for the next couple of weeks. It's a C-style language, so you have to change gears a little bit. Make sure to go through the GLSL tutorial in the lab write-up before you start on the homework. You'll find the shaders already partially implemented for you in the shaders directory of the starter code that we provide. When you start your homework assignment, you'll see a bunch of unilluminated gray teapots like these ones. By the end of the homework, you'll have implemented a different shading model for each teapot and we'll see something like this. Carrying over from last week, you'll have control over the model and view matrices by toggling the appropriate buttons at the top. You have some additional controls as well. We start you off with one point light, but you can add more by clicking the Add Point Light button. You can control the positions of the point light sources by toggling into the point light control mode and using your mouse to drag the point light around. Clicking point light control repeatedly will cycle through the point light source you control. You can add and move directional light sources in the same manner. Now back to what you'll actually be implementing. The leftmost teapot is already done for you and is illuminated with only ambient light. The next teapot, which you'll implement in homework section 2.1.1, is illuminated with ambient and diffuse lighting from a point source using the GROW shading model. The middle teapot from section 2.1.2 includes ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting from a point source using the Garo shading model once again. The second to right teapot from section 2.2 is illuminated with the same lighting but using the Fong shading model. The rightmost teapot from section 2.3 accounts for ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting from a point source as well as diffuse and specular lighting from a directional light source, again using the Fong shading model. When you are implementing the homeworks, make sure to rotate the teapots and viewer positions to verify that the lighting is correct for all sides of the teapots. Good luck, and make sure to come to office hours or post on Piazza if you have any questions.